Hello, everybody. We have a bit of an alternative outside of my normal wheelhouse for a video topic to discuss today, but absolutely in my wheelhouse when it comes to criticism and what I do here on the channel. Because I'm asked all the time by people who would probably surprise you of what it feels like to negatively review a book. I've been asked by well-known authors I've interviewed, too many fans, too fellow booktubers who feel bad when they give negative reviews. They ask me, you know, how do you do it? Do you ever blunt it? And my response is no, because authors, most of the time are adults who understand this is my perspective reviewing their work and they can take my criticism however they see fit. And of course I can't force them to like my criticism. They absolutely have every right to dismiss it. And I encourage them to do so if they find it to be invalid and that's absolutely okay. That's a part of the relationship we have here. And I've been trying to work on a video to display like good and bad examples of responding to criticism, but I didn't want to call people out for having bad responses to criticism because I didn't want to be that way. Um, but luckily, a very public figure, so it's fair for me to do this, unlike what they did in attacking a not public figure, um, basically made a gigantic fool of themselves as well as a bunch of other authors piling on. So I get to point at them because they did this publicly and they are already public figures and just show how they have the worst response possible to mild criticism as a way to show you this is how you shouldn't interpret criticism at all, especially mild, misquoted, old criticism. I just, wow, this is incredible. So for those of you unaware, Sarah Dessen is a YA author and a large amount of the debate around here uh, tries to focus on the fact that YA is often dismissed as not serious literature by a lot of people. And it's often talked down to, especially when it's aimed at teenage girls. And that's true, that happens all the time and it's not fair. But unfortunately for Sarah Dessen who tried to control the narrative of that's what this is, it wasn't what the original person was trying to say. And her just drastic uh, skewing of the facts and acting like a massive toddler having a hissy fit on Twitter is just deplorable and embarrassing from her perspective. She's since deleted these tweets, but not really announce an apology in any way, shape or form, which she absolutely should. So let's go ahead and pour through what this author did to a college graduate who was just going about their life one day when a many years old offhanded quote was taken out of context and used against them. And then they had tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of fans sent after them. So just summarizing the article and what happened here. Uh, a couple years ago, there was a university who was selecting a book for their freshmen to be required to read. And one student, Nelson, wanted to have a book about a, uh, it's a real story, a memoir about a black man who's convicted of a murder he didn't. Do. So it's a very compelling, powerful story and definitely on a level that most fiction works are not on because one, it's true and it's a meditation on our own society. And another book was also being voted on that this student was pushing against and it was by this author, Sarah Dessen. And the quote that this student had in response to Sarah Dessen's book almost being chosen was, she's fine for teen girls, Nelson said, but definitely not up to the level of common read, but the name of the group that's choosing the book. So I became involved simply so I could stop them from ever choosing Sarah Dessen. Now, again, this is something that can be taken in a lot of ways, depending on the context. But within the context of this student wanted to have a real story about racial prejudice in America versus this YA novel. And again, I've defended YA many times in my channel. I am not anti-YA. It becomes very clear what she means and what any adult who understands this context would take away from this. She's not saying that, no, it's just for teen girls and that's all Sarah Dessen should be. She's just saying that, no, that's her target audience and that's fine, but I want to have a book chosen that challenges people's perceptions about the real world and will spark real conversation at this university. Now, this was a quote in a local newspaper in a town of less than 30,000 residents from a while ago. Sarah Dessen decided to take the quote from the article, roughly scribble out the name and tweet, Authors are real people. We put our hearts and souls into the stories we write, often because it is literally how we survive in this world. So does every job 
Like, that's how we survive. I survive making videos and reading and critiquing books. By the way, I'll never read and critique your book because I don't want to have a giant hissy fit from someone who's way bigger than me online sending their hordes of angry fans at me. So congratulations, you've probably just stopped a whole lot of critics from ever picking up your book and giving you publicity if they did like them. I'm having a really hard time right now, and this is just mean and cruel. I hope it made you feel good. What? <laughs> it made the person feel good to be like, no, I don't necessarily want the people to read this book. I'd much rather they read that book. What do you mean? What kind of weird twisting of narrative is this? And by the way, very predictably, people found the article, they found the name when it's not scribbled out, and now the person's being harassed and cyberbullied by this author's followers, which absolutely Sarah Dessen knew would happen. If you are not mentally deficient, you understand in today's day and age, if you take something that's published online, try and take something out and then put it out to your followers, they will go find it and they will find out who it is and then go shame them. You absolutely knew that would be the result of your actions unless you have no understanding of technology whatsoever and you would have to be a complete moron to not call that. There's a quote here from another YA author about how it's frustrating for authors who write YA to be constantly demeaned and dismissed, especially when they're writing for teen girls. And again, I agree with that. I think it is frustrating and your genre is completely valid. I'm not trying to make the case against that and I agree with this point wholeheartedly. But now we get into the response from Nelson, the person who originally made this statement and how they feel the response is completely blown out of proportion. My quote was taken out of context. Nelson said in an email statement to the Post, noting that in addition to Stevenson's book, she also argued for Breath, Eyes, Memory by Edwin DeCant and When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Callen... I'm dyslexic. These three books are beautifully written and push readers to understand the racial inequality that the judicial system perpetuates to consider the heritability and influence of tradition and trauma and to contemplate what brings meaning to one's life. So this person just had an issue they really cared about and were advocating for that issue. Yes, if you take their original quote completely out of context, which Sarah, before you send this quote to your hundreds of thousands of followers, if you were a competent public figure, you would have absolutely taken the five minutes of research to understand the brighter context or, you know, not tried to light a fire under a college graduate's butt for no reason. And for those who may be thinking I'm like over-exaggerating Sarah Dessen's position, she's been a New York Times bestseller repeatedly. This is someone very big taking a gargantuan shot at someone who has no public profile and can't really defend themselves. But the backlash to Nelson was swift. By Friday morning, the post had 729 retweets and 2,500 replies. Many piled on to the 2017 college graduate as other well-known authors joined the fray. And this is where it gets remarkable to me. F that effing B fellow author Sobhan Vivian replied to Dessen's tweet in a post that she did later delete. Dessen responded to that by saying, I love you, heart. So here are some of the replies from authors who felt the need to attack this college graduate without knowing the full context. It's just amazing to me how someone with a huge public profile like this is willing to jump into an issue, not fully researching it, and then just bury this poor person who's now being harassed. How insecure do you have to be in your genre that you feel this is the proportional response? There are less people who will take you seriously now. Here's my favorite part. But Nelson supporters say the Twitter outrage missed some key facts, including that the university book selections are chosen annually by a large volunteer committee of current students. In her junior year, Nelson was just one vote on that committee. So no, this wasn't some dictatorial person being like, we won't read this book because it's aimed at teen girls. No, it was one person who has a vote in the larger group who just had this one perspective and this one issue they wanted covered. And you've buried them now in harassment. Nelson deactivated her Twitter and Facebook because the level of backlash she got. How can you feel okay doing this as a public figure? It's really gross. Also, it's pointed out here that Northern State University has selected YA, including the hate you give, in its past reading uh, assignments for freshmen. And Angie Thomas feels the need to say like, oh, look, you have selected teenage girl aimed YA before. Therefore, everything we're saying is right. And you should absolutely choose a Sarah Dessen book when absolutely that's not the you take away here. What you should take away here is there is no bias against your genre for this reading group. And again, you're attacking one person who has one vote in this larger committee and you're acting like the university's trying to put you down. Amid the enormous backlash, both Northern State University and the reporter who wrote the news story apologized to Dessen on Tuesday. I definitely didn't mean to be cruel by including this quote. Reporter Catherine Grandstand tweeted, I'm so sorry. Are you 
kidding me? You have nothing to apologize for. You did your job and included a quote from one person who's involved in this small group who's going to be choosing a book that some freshmen read. You did absolutely nothing wrong. And I guarantee you the only reason this person apologizes is the amount of pressure they feel they're under right now. Same thing for the university's apology. We are very sorry to Sarah Destin for the comments made in a news article by one of our alums in reference to our 2016 common read. They do not reflect the view continues and they do a really long apology. What? You are sorry as a university because one of your students had an opinion and it got written about? What? Now, luckily, there have been some established public authors who are coming out against this uh, and saying, no, you should be ashamed. Many of them in the YA genre saying this is a ridiculous way to behave and you're throwing a hissy fit gross and I completely agree. There's one I like in particular, a millionaire dunking on a college girl for not liking her work is the person who should be issuing an apology. You're goddamn right. Here's another great quote in response. I was totally not expecting a slew of best-selling authors to rally around her to shut down a college grad they knew nothing about, Simon told the Post in a Twitter direct message. A university is supposed to foster intellectual diversity, not force all of its students to share an opinion about one author's book. I don't feel it was their place to get involved. This would imply that Northern has to apologize every single time a celebrity criticizes one of their students slash anums, which quite frankly is strange. And you're right, it is. And I think the best way to close this off is uh, Nelson's final closing remarks to the Washington Post here. Uh, if anything comes out of this larger conversation, I hope it's that others will make it a point to read books like Just Mercy that push them beyond their usual perspective and challenge their assumptions of society. What an adult mature way to redirect the narrative back to an important issue you believe in. I respect this person immensely for how well they're handling it. I'm sorry you got harassed so violently online that you had to shut down your Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Sarah Dessen, you owe a very public apology to which of uh, recording this video you still have not released uh, to this person. Uh, to her fans that went and harassed this random online person who dared have an opinion, you are pathetic and completely deserving of ridicule. My God. Like, okay, summarizing this right now, an author who is a best-selling author. He should be very secure in their work. Like you've sold so mil you've sold millions. You are a millionaire saw an old quote from a college grad who was going like, yeah, I, you know, I don't really want that here. I'd rather have this issue I really care about focused on. And I think that author's great for teen girls, which was the part of the quote that could be misconstrued. I want this one issue I care deeply about talked about. And in response, you call them out publicly, basically saying, I hope it made you feel good to say that. And then your peers respond by saying this. So these authors as well should be very ashamed and issue public apologies to Nelson. Long story short, grow up.